as mentioned, uh, I, I'm a, I was an elementary school teacher for uh, almost 10 years. And let's see, let me just share this here. So one thing that's important to me, you know, I live uh, in the United States. And so um, we have the First Amendment uh, in our Constitution. And so every teacher takes a constitutional oath as part of the teaching contract. Uh, and it says to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Our founding fathers established a set of amendments to the Constitution, and those were ratified on December 15th, 1791. The First Amendment begins, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. And so there's two things in part of this, part of this clause. There's the establishment clause. So that says Congress shall not make, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. And this applies to the government officials at the local, state, and federal level. So that's the establishment clause. Next, uh, you know, as a public school teacher in the United States, we are considered to be a state employee. So according to the establishment clause, uh, it is not the role of any state employee to establish a set of religious beliefs, which includes classroom settings. So maybe some of our audience members are thinking of becoming a teacher in the United States. This applies. So the free exercise clause, there, there's the establishment clause, but then there's the free exercise clause, and that is, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. So that grants both individuals and groups the right to practice their faith without the government regulating or censoring, you know, what, what, they, what religion they want to believe in. So therefore, as a teacher, like in a public school, you're free to adhere to any religious faith in whatever capacity you wish outside the classroom setting. So freedom of religion. So teachers and religion in class. As a state employee, it says the First Amendment also prevents the government from coercing individuals in matters of religion. This means that in the classroom, our goal should be not to indoctrinate students. So for me, I'm a Christian. I, I'm, a, I'm a Christ follower myself. But I don't believe that public school teachers are allowed to use or our platform to preach Christianity in the same manner we teach social studies, math, or language arts, just as others would not expect a teacher who is, say, a Muslim or an atheist to preach to their students. Public schools should not serve as churches. So I want to make the important distinction, however, that it says freedom of religion, not freedom, freedom from religion. So this is not to say that students should not learn about religion in schools, for that too would be improper censorship of human rights. However, classrooms should not be viewed as a secondary sanctuary or temple in which teachers attempt to serve as clergy. Um, and so our former US Secretary of Education put it quite well when he said, our history as a nation reflects the history of the Puritan, the Quaker, the Baptist, the Catholic, the Jew, and many others fleeing persecution to find religious freedom in America. The United States remains the most successful experiment in religious freedom that the world has ever known because the First Amendment uniquely balances freedom of private religious belief and expression with freedom from state-imposed religious expression. He went on to say, public schools can neither foster religion nor preclude it. Our public schools must treat religion with fairness and respect and vigorously protect religious expression as well as the freedom of conscience of all other students. In so doing, our public schools reaffirm the First Amendment, which enriched the lives of their students. So that was a former U.S. Secretary of Education. So basically, promoting religious freedom, staying neutral. Government or public schools should remain neutral on religion. A general rule could be that public schools may not promote one religion of faith over the other, and no promo, right? The public schools should not promote faith-based over secular-based life or vice versa. So in my view, as I said, I mentioned I'm a Christ follower. So 1 John 3.18 says, uh, you know, therefore, I believe that in an effort to actively teach civic values and morals as the federal guidelines state, 1 John 3.18 gives Christians the best method by which we should view our role as a Christian educator in public school. The author, First John, writes, Little children, let us not love merely in theory or in speech, but in deed, in truth, in practice, and in sincerity. And so rather than simply trying to teach our students about the doctrines of Christianity or any other religion for that matter, as a person of faith, I believe we should display God's love for all every day throughout sincere acts of patience, empathy, encouragement, and appropriate moral guidance. After all, the Bible states you will fully recognize them by their fruits. 
It does not say you will fully recognize them by how many times they read a religious text or read from the Bible in a classroom. Jesus didn't force anyone to love him. He compelled them by his love. So I believe we ought to follow Jesus's lead. And those other faiths or no faith at all, I still believe that in the power of kindness and treating others with respect for goodness is not bound by any religion. So, professor? yes, uh, federal guidelines for religious expression. So students have the right to engage in individual or group prayer, religious discussion during school as they do to engage in other comparable activities. Students may attempt to persuade peers about religious topics as they would other topics, but schools should stop such speech that constitutes harassment. And then finally, schools may actively teach civic values and morals, even if some of those values also happen to be uh, religious values. President Clinton said, schools do more than train children's minds. They also help nurture their souls by reinforcing the values they learn at home and in their communities. I believe that one of the best ways we can help out schools to do this by is supporting students' rights to voluntarily practice their religious beliefs including pr prayer in schools. For more than 200 years, the First Amendment has protected our religious freedom and allowed many faiths to flourish in our homes, in our workplace, and in our schools. Clearly understood and sensibly applied, it works. So thank you so much for all of your time.